All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the, glad you joined it, Craig, hey. the Texas Start Channel. Behind us, we have the 2023 Mazda CX-5. Actually, the first time we've had this on the show. Which is funny, because it's their best-selling model. It's their best-selling model, and we've had every single Mazda they make, except for the CX-5. We've had some of them multiple times. It's just luck of the draw. Anyways, this one's really new. In fact, I was the first person to use a rear wiper washer on this. Had to hear the air go through the line. That was pretty cool. 2.5 turbo, top trim, and there's some features in here I was not expecting from the CX-5. We like it a lot. Let's start with the two highlights that Mazda always kicks at paint. And tragically, this press car is gray for some reason, and it doesn't highlight Mazda's best work, but I can tell you right now, there is not a swirl or imperfection anywhere on this thing. It won't come out in camera. It probably looks black on camera. The interior probably looks black. That's actually brown. But anyways, if you get that with the soul red, crystal mica, metallic, mm -hmm. whatever, the, the best color available today, Mazda can put that on here too. It looks incredible. This paint is incredible. It doesn't show on camera, that's all. Bring it down here. Classic Mazda nose. We've seen this before. We're kind of used to it now. It still looks gorgeous. These headlights, they have indicators and uh, wraparound indicators that look different than some of the other models. They look better, I think. They also have the best headlights on sale today across any price point that we've driven. They aim at night. They are bright. There's not a goofy cutoff line um, like some LEDs have. These are just incredible, incredible. In fact, some other vehicles have lots of lights that aren't as good as just the two that are on here. So it tells you a lot right there when you get the right people in the room, they make the right product. Craig, what's new about the exterior for 23? Oh, wrong, yes, wrong, I know, wrong. I know. What? Uh, there's less black. There's less black. All, this, all looks black on the camera. <laughs> it all looks black. This is usually flat black or a matte black. And it used to be for the whole off-road look. If you got stone chips, it wouldn't hit here. Look, Mazda's admitting now this is really to be a nice premium product. And that's, this is a nice premium product. These are now body color paint. You got the CX-50 for off-road. So 650 covers that, and that's really what is allowing this to go up market. And so I'm actually curious, uh, comment below if you're if you're wondering too, or if you know the answer or think you know the answer, is the CX-50 gonna cannibalize the sales of this? Because this thing sells a ton. This thing pays the bills at Mazda and keeps the lights on. The CX-5 is a money maker for them. Um, it feels like they're going up market with the CX-5 and letting the CX-50 play in the mud. That's what it feels like to me. But anyways, power folding mirrors, that is nice. Um, and let's come around the side over here. You keep this bottom, chrome lip looks really cool and the top is now matted out that looks good you keep a roof rail so you can mount a roof rack accessory down the road this one doesn't have it in it has the cap on it right now but it does exist something i really like craig see this guy right here that sunroof it's not pano which means you have headroom in the second row and also i don't know about your seating position craig but where i was sitting it was in the right spot i knew it was there i could see out of it it was value added some sunroofs are so far back that it's not worth opening them uh, coming to the, to the rear, got our badging, all-wheel drive, signature, and obviously it's a turbo down here. And we have driven this power plant before. There's not a whole lot to learn here because we have experienced it so much. We're going to tell you about that in a minute, but let's cover the interior first with Craig. All right, we're going to start out in the back. Brian mentioned the all-wheel drive earlier, which is interesting because Mazda's taking a play out of Subaru's playbook, and they're all all-wheel drive now. All their SUVs are. Automatic hatch, which is nice, and plenty of room back here. It's kind of hard to see on the camera but it's just simple. They're not trying to fit a third row in here. It is what it is. There's plenty of room and it's practical and easy to use. You get a spare full, well, almost maybe a full size spare. With a subwoofer yeah. in the middle. Yeah, pretty good spare. And speaking of subwoofer, that says Bose down there. The Bose is pretty good. So let's uh, move on to the rear second row. All right, moving on to business class. And uh, class, business class is a good way to put it because it's actually pretty nice. It's better than coach. I'm sitting behind myself. Now I'm only 5'9". I'm sure if there was a taller driver, you'd lose a little bit of room, but it does actually go in some, so, but fairly comfortable. My kids have sat back here on some long trips and plenty of room. Because Brian, like Brian mentioned earlier, you don't have a panel roof. You've got plenty of headroom back here. It comes down a little bit back here, but there's plenty of headroom. There's grab handles on all four corners. The materials are nice, even in the back row. And then Brian, this beautiful brown. We've got a center armrest here of cup holders and heated seats in the back. But that's not all. You flip this up and you get a USB charger for all your kids' iPhones, iPads. Keep them happy when you're on that long trip. Let's move on to the front. Moving on to the front, this is where Mazda spends a lot of time making sure you're comfortable as a driver and you're engaged and you're looking at the things you're supposed to be looking at. So they really think that through. They're almost Toyota-like and that they want you to do something a certain way. So much so, in fact, that they think this is better than a touchscreen, which it does work once you get used to it, and I actually prefer it once I do get used to it. But I'll admit I'm a little bit of a Mazda fanboy. But let's play a game of, they didn't, they didn't have a chip for that. So first up, 
Wait, wait, wait. Is the engine running, Craig? The engine's running because there's not any... Uh, wait, where's the start-stop button? Yeah, there's no start-stop button. Uh, it, it's gone. It's gone. No start-stop button. Yes. Also, uh, Brian, there's... Um, when you try to open the door, there's a button on the pillar you have to push. Usually, you just put your hand there and it senses it and it opens. Uh, not anymore. Um, and then... Like we mentioned earlier, no touchscreen here. That's another chip shortage thing, we think, because the CX-50 does have a touchscreen now, so we know that's starting to show up in more cars. I will say the clarity of that camera <sighs> is incredible. Yes, the great camera views. They're, the clarity is really good, and you actually tell what's going on. Let me show the instrument cluster real quick. Instrument cluster, nothing too fancy. Again, just straightforward and simple. There's a few, there's some information you can get, but not a lot. Um, so a, very straightforward. The radar cruise control looks good. You do have sport mode, and then new to this model, you get all-wheel drive mode, or off-road mode, I'm sorry. So, just like the CX-50, um, not that anyone's going to really be taking this off-road very much, but it's there. With that, it's just a really comfortable seat. It is a little shorter than I would prefer. Brian, this seems a little short. I don't know if that's about giving more space and making you more upright. I wish I could get a little lower and I wish I had a little more length. But those are my only quibbles. Everything else in here is premium and nice. Zero to 60 time. Zero to 60 time. Let's hit it. All right, Brian, it's time for some zoom zoom. Is that what Mazda does now? Well, zoom zoom is not always 0 to 60, though, either, so that's going to be a problem. I've never seen a Mazda with an off-road mode before. No, but why don't we try sport mode? Let's try sport. All right, ready? Bring the boost. Yeah, regular torque converter. Hit it! <laughs> Wheel spin. Front one will drive. <laughs> it's just too early. Well, it runs out of turbo. 60. What was that? <laughs> what was that? Well, 6.77. That was the best with you driving earlier, solo. Yes. And yes. um, with us just now, it was just over 7. Yeah. Um, which is respectable for what this is. I don't so, know anybody that buys us that needs it to go faster than that. Well, besides me. <laughs> well, but yeah. No, no, no. No, in all reality, it's actually, I, I've driven this a little bit too. And look, just putting it out there. Every Mazda built today, save for the Miata, is built on a version of this platform. Mm -hmm. So we're not foreign to this. Right. And that number makes perfect sense. Yep. Um, this motor is still really young. It's at 1,400 miles. Mm -hmm. It's still got some break in, and that'll probably get better over about 10,000 miles. Um, so fair number, and everything I like about Mazda is working here too. The ride is sublime. Look, here's the deal. Um, I'm not real sure this compares to. I know there's debate whether the RAV4 competes more with the CX-50. The biggest problem Mazda has is the CX-50. Oh, yeah, okay. there's some cannibalism going on. But there, let's yeah. just say you're in the RAV4 uh, HR, I'm sorry, CRV CR market. Um, you're in that world, Nissan Rogue, I guess. Yeah, um, I guess so. This, this, is, this is so much more premium feeling than that, any that's of those. Just it. There's two things I want to, like, um, based on what you just, just mentioned, there's two things to hit on. One, this is way smaller than all of those you've mentioned. The CRV, Han, and their packaging is insane. It's like yeah, two true. segments bigger true. than it should be inside. Um, the Super Outback is a, a little longer than this, but width wise, it's not mm -hmm. the same. Mm -hmm. But premium feel. Mm. No one can hold a candle of Maz on this. No. And you brought something up earlier about this. What's special about this one? I don't know. Where's it made? Oh, it's a J spec. It's a J spec. Yes. And I'm not trying to rip on the 650 because I think the 650 looks better, mm -hmm. longer, lower, wider. Um, and I think the seat bottom is a little bit longer. I think I'm more comfortable seating position wise in the Agreed. 650. Yeah, I'm more comfortable in the 630, 650, and the 69. Fair. <laughs> and the 630. Um, but you're going to say that. Yeah. But, anyways, because they're all the same. But, anyways, yeah. my takeaway on this is that the build quality is <sighs> night and day better than the early pre pro that we had of the 650. So I want to get hey, a caveat. That's true. It's true. The plant is new. It's made in Alabama. One of the it's, first things ever made. Exactly. Yeah, I yeah, guarantee yeah. you the next one won't feel that way. But sure. you just close the door on this and you go, oh. Wow. This doesn't feel yeah. Japanese to me yeah. at all. This is yeah. or not like affordable. This doesn't feel affordable to me. Right, right, it, right. And it's it's forty thousand dollars as mm -hmm. equipped. It, um, that's, that's every option. Every option on the market. And yeah. look, we have ventilated seats. One of the things my wife mentioned, she says, "There's not too many things going on here. It's not too busy. Right. It's simple. It's clean. It's straightforward." And, and I quiet. think that's what Mazda was going for. They know yes, it. it is a premium product, and I love it for that. And I want to hit on something that we've argued about endlessly. If you've seen our Mazda content before. This 2.5 turbo has been the bane of my existence because I keep expecting Zoom Zoom. 
when I get in this, it makes perfect sense. It, it, it makes the most sense in this application. Yeah. And it makes sense that Mazda made it make the most sense in this application. Sure. Look, they, they can only afford to do one powertrain. Right. This right. is what they right. sell more than anything else. Exactly. Of course they made it work in this the best. Yeah. It makes sense. Actually, that's a good point. This is the number one selling vehicle that they produce. Yeah. Of course they've targeted this. Because look, in the CX-9, I think this motor's a little bit outgunned because there's just more weight. There's a third row mm -hmm. and it's longer. And the CX-30, it makes sense as well because it's kind of this cross it's not the, the three. The mm -hmm. Mazda three, it makes no sense to me because it doesn't rev at all. Sure, it, it just is the manual natural aspirated. Right, manual natural aspirated makes perfect yeah. sense. But you want a, car, a hot hatch to rev and be fun. That's not what this power yeah, plant is. It's not a hot hatch though. This is, well, I would agree with that. <laughs> go well, back we, to that video. And watch yeah, that go back to that video. That's a different argument. <laughs> but this thing is a premium mid-size crossover. Yep. And it is smooth and buttery and has oh. all the torque when you want it. It's perfect. Okay, two drive and drive things I want to mention. The suspension itself, the ride and drive of it. I think it's it's. It's just right. It's not too soft. It's not too firm. It's kind of a little bit Goldilocks, my Baghdadi neighborhood. It works. Yeah, does it? Yeah. We had something else this week here driving that was really meant for rough roads, and you said this road better? It did. Yeah, that's such a specific test your neighborhood. I know, I know. It's crazy. The, the test is 40 miles per hour and rough roads with potholes. This didn't handle it this well. nails it, yeah. Okay, last thing, I, wanna, I want your opinion on this, because it used to be you get front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive. Now Mazda has oh, followed yeah. the Subaru, and I'm kind of mad at Subaru for this. Now you can only get all-wheel drive and CX-5s and all the SUVs going forward. Wait, why are you mad at Subaru? Because when I drive this... I want to be front-wheel drive. I want it to just be front-wheel drive. Want, How about you? What do you think? I wish I could blow the front tires off and I can for half a second. That's there you go. Enough. Because I'll be honest, if you're going to make it all-wheel drive, let that thing react immediately. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't. Um, it, it sends power back after a few seconds. That well, being said, I drove a long time in the rain on the twisties and it, 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 it performed admirably, so you know. Totally. And one thing I want to get back to, and we've said this a lot with Mazda stuff, I'll repeat it again. Mazda cares about the tuning and how things drive. Mm -hmm. And granted, this is not a Miata. It's not trying nope. to be zoom zoom. But your inputs are very linear. Yes. Just like they've always gotten right. And it, you feel like you've been driving this car for years. It's the moment you get in it. The moment you get in it. Yep. And it's, and we've, we've known people to get in Mazda for the first time and say the same thing they've never driven yeah, before. Yeah, it's not just us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with that, anything else you want to add? No, that's it. No, I'll... They did a good job. I've got a question for you. Mm. You got to buy a Mazda today. It can't be a Miata. Which one are you getting? Because they're all the same platform. Has to be the turbo? No, it doesn't have to be a turbo. Mazda 3 is the manual. Okay, has to be a turbo. Oh, CX-9. CX-9. Because the seats are more comfortable. These are too short. Okay, fair. I would also go Mazda 3 with the manual. Okay. And if I had to go turbo, I would go this. Really? Over the CX-50 or the CX-30? Yes. Why? Build quality. Over the CX-30? The 630 doesn't have a lot of room in the back. Agreed. That's, that's, that's the problem with the 630. The exactly. And this does drive as well as the 630. It's not like there's a penalty for this at all. Okay. The 630. I know we're going a little longer than we should. <laughs> Last question for you. <laughs> this is what Mazda's do to us. I know. Last question for you. Is this long for this world with the ex existence of the 650? I want our viewers to tell us that. I think this is going to shift in the marketplace. I think it's going to get a little bit nicer. Mm. And everything's going CX now. Mm -hmm. CX 90 is coming out. CX 60s yep. in other countries, that kind of stuff. This might go away. I think it is. It might. You think it is? Yep. Okay. I think it's gone. With that, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the uh, all the buttons and stuff down there. Yeah, those. Let's know if you have any questions. We'll all the socials. Check all us out on the socials. That. Have a good one. See ya.